All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. We got a new bike. It's from the Electric Bike Company. This is the Model F, which stands for foldable. And this bike definitely does fold in half, so you can fit this in your compact car and everything like that. It's definitely different from what the company has been doing lately. And they've had a lot of beach cruiser bikes. And I guess you could say this is, you know, it's kind of like a beach cruiser bike in a way, but um, definitely different when you ride it. The bars are a lot shorter. Obviously everything collapses. This bike comes fully assembled. So if you didn't see my video on that, you should definitely check it out and see the unboxing because there's only one bolt you have to tighten. One bolt in here and the bike's good to go. You literally just roll it out of the box. Um, I did have to adjust the seat a little bit, but in, literally in 15 minutes, you're up and riding this bike, which is crazy. So I want to let you guys know that I did not buy this bike. They sent it to me for free to do a review, but I can also say whatever I want about the bike. And what I will say about these bikes is they are absolutely fantastic. They are made in the United States in California and they have a bunch of other different places also, but that's the one where this bike came from. And I will say it came without a scratch on it. I mean, absolutely fantastic. I've had so many e-bikes come. I've had blemishes because the packages got scratched or something like that. But no, this comes in a very huge package and it came delivered perfectly fine in the box. Now you are looking at the Model F with the basket and a rear rack. Yours isn't going to come with that. That's going to be extra. This bike does start at $17.99. It is a 48 volt system and it has about a 750 watt rear motor with a peak of about a thousand watts. As I was riding it down my block and stuff, I saw about 900 and something watts on the display. Also, keep in mind this bike does come as a class two e-bike. It only does 20 miles an hour. So before we get on the ride, I'm gonna show you how to change that if you wanna go faster on this bike, but also make sure you follow your state and local regulations on that. All right, so this is how to do it. You're gonna hold the up and down button, hold them at the same time as the bike's coming on. You're going to get into this little menu right here. And the first thing you're going to change is the limit. So mine's set at 72. I already did this earlier. That's the max that you can do it. I think normally it's at like 20 or 30 something. So once you change that, you're going to want to go to C4. C4 is going to be over here. I changed mine also. It's on four and I did 60%. I think that was the max. Hold the power button again and then it goes right back to display and now you're unlocked to go as fast as you can. Make sure if you do that mod on your bike, the company's not responsible for you. I'm not responsible for what happens to you and make sure you follow your local laws and always wear a helmet because it's definitely gonna push this bike a lot faster than when it came out of the box. All right, but other than that, let's get back into the bike and I did have to close my garage because we've had some local trash pickup going on out there when it's throwing out all their stuff in the street and there's just people pulling up to my house looking inside and i don't want people knowing that i have all these bikes up in here but since we do have the garage closed that gives me a perfect opportunity to show you guys these lights now this bike i showed you it comes with the basket and the basket does have a light on it if you do get it but if you don't get the basket it will still come with a light that will be attached right here and it will sit a little bit outside the frame but let's see how this basket light works and how it looks. And then we're gonna show you the lights in the back because you got two brake lights right here. And if you get a rear rack, you're gonna get a light right here in the back. All right, so if you need to turn these lights on, first you gotta turn the bike on and then you just hold this up arrow right here. And there you go, your lights are on and it will show a little light indicator letting you know that your lights are on. The brake lights will also come on at the same time. So let me turn these lights off in the garage and check them out. All right, so here's how the bike looks at night. There's absolutely no lights in my garage whatsoever other than the bike. And that's how the basket headlight works and looks like. Now, it's not the brightest light I've ever seen on a bike. It's gonna get you from A to B. You're, you're gonna be able to see, but if you want any extra lights, I would definitely think about ordering an extra one to put on your handlebars or something like that. Um, I can't comment on how the stock light works if you do not get the basket, because it's gonna be a totally different light than that one but still works regardless. And in the back, we got our brake lights. Now these things, those things are bright. Those are definitely bright. And then you also have a light right here if you end up getting the basket, which is pretty cool because it's so far at the very end of the bike. So people are definitely gonna be able to see you. The only bad thing about these lights, they do not work with the brakes. Like I'm hitting the brakes right now, they don't work. Same with this, nothing flashes, nothing gets brighter. So keep that in mind that these don't work as an actual brake light like a car would. So keep that in mind. All right, so let's get a good look at this bike because the quality of it is just absolutely fantastic. So let's get in here real close and kind of show you some stuff. 
So underneath this huge, nice, comfortable seat, you're gonna have some suspension in it. I mean, that is very nice because this bike doesn't have rear suspension, so that's definitely gonna help you. You do have some big, fat tires on here. They're three inches wide and 24 inches tall. These are their own brand electric bike tires, which is pretty cool. Here is the motor, if you wanna see right in there, it says EBC. And this is a single speed, so this not a like Shimano six or seven speed that normally comes on most of electric bikes. Right down there is where you're gonna have your alarm system. So if you use my code, Mr. Central Driver, you should get that alarm system with your electric bike. And right down here underneath the frame, you're gonna have a quick disconnect for the motor. So just in case you get a rear flat tire or something like that, you don't have to take this whole entire wire system off. You literally could just unplug it from here, which makes it very convenient. Slide it off and you're good to go. Over here, we have our folding mechanism for the electric bike and it's pretty nice. Feels very firm. Just make sure when you put it on, you hear it clamp down. You don't want this thing coming apart when you're riding it. You have adjustable suspension up front, which is super nice and a lot of travel. Popping over to this side, if you can see in there, you got your electric bike hubs and you have nice quick releases right there if you wanna take this tire off for any reason. And you got your nice hydraulic brakes right down here. And sliding over here is where you have the key to take out the battery. So let's get the key for this bike so we can uh, take this battery off and check it out. I just realized this bike comes with three keys. That's a lot of keys for a bike. I mean, I'm not hating, just in case you uh, lose stuff a lot, it's pretty nice. So uh, you're gonna come in here and basically just turn it to the left and then this should pop out. Oh, I had to hold it the whole time to get it out. There we go. And this is your battery right here. Pretty nice and compact. You have a little indicator right here. If you could see that shows you like where the battery's at. It should be pretty much at like 95% because I just charged it the other night. So that's why it's showing green. And if you come over here, if you can see that it's 48 volt and it's a 12 amp hour battery. So it's not a 20 amp hour battery, which most bikes have been coming with, but at the same time, this bike is pretty light and it doesn't have a ton of power, but you'll be surprised on how this bike feels when you get on it. All right, so this is how you put the battery back in. You're gonna wanna put the downside in first and basically just put it like that and then snap it in like that, but make sure you lock it. So you gotta go all the way to the right to lock it and then pull the key out. Don't want your battery coming out at all. And if you never plan on taking this battery off the bike to charge it, you can always charge it with the battery in the bike. That's what I do. I just leave them overnight in my garage. You can take this nice little rubber plug out right here. It actually has a little charging indicator on it. That is pretty cool. Very nice and well done. There's not gonna be any water getting in that little hole, but you're gonna stick your little charger in there and you're good to go. And talking about the charger, it's actually a pretty fast charger for a 12 amp hour battery. It's 3.5 amps. So you're gonna be charging this bike pretty damn fast and you're gonna be on the way in no time in a few hours compared to some other bikes that take six to eight hours. This should definitely go a lot faster than that. All right, so let's move to the top of the bike now. And this is where you have your folding mechanism for the bars. Now it's very hard to do with one hand, so I think I'll need both my hands free. But you basically just slide this little red thing up here and then you can push this out. And then these will fold down to the side. Um, coming up here, you have Bangle hydraulic brakes. I don't really see a lot of e-bike companies use these, but oh my God, they feel so good. I mean, I don't understand why more companies aren't using these. By the way, cable management on point. I love these sleeve cables that they use. Coming up to the grips, how would you say? They feel nice in the hands. They're not like sticky or anything like that, but I do like that they have their electric bike logo on here and they also are locking, so they're not gonna slide up and down on you. And obviously right here you have your power control settings and all that. You have your nice color display right here, which will pop on so you can see. And there you go. Keep in mind when you do turn this bike on, it's always gonna be on pedal assist off. So to turn pedal assist on, you're gonna have to hold the down button and now pedal assist is on. So just keep that in mind if you try going and riding this bike and using the pedals right away when you get on it, you're gonna be like, why aren't the pedals working? So that's why. Sliding over here, you have your thumb throttle right here. I like that electric bike company does thumb throttles. They didn't want to do any throttles on this because some people that don't understand electric bikes, they just get on them and they twist the throttle and they end up just whiskey throttling it into like a wall or something like that. So I actually appreciate thumb throttles. I think they're very safe and comfortable to me in my hands. Now coming underneath these bars, um, you do have a latch right here. So you can move these up and down. Make sure you don't go super high because then you'll start pulling on these wires a lot. But I will say the only thing this bike needs that it doesn't have 
these bars do not, um, they don't have any type of angle to them. So there's no type of folding way like where you can move these closer to you or farther away from you. So depending on how you feel about that, you're always gonna have the same distance. And we'll kind of talk about that when we ride and whatnot. But to me, I think that's a little oversight that they missed where it should have been adjustable right here where you can move the bars back and forth. All right, so I said this was a folding bike, right? So we gotta fold it. Now it's gonna be the first time I've ever done it on camera, so it might take me a little bit of time. So this is probably gonna be real world if you are trying it for the first time also. And I'm actually curious to see how it folds with a basket because foldable bikes don't ever really come with baskets. So it's kind of uh, different, right? So I had to put the kickstand up, obviously. Let's do the pedals first. Those are very easy. Push them in and fold. So let's do both of those. I'm not exactly sure where the pedals are exactly supposed to sit because there's a certain orientation where they're supposed to be at. And then coming up to here, we gotta do this main latch. All right, there we go. Then these are gonna fold down to the side right here. Just be careful because, I mean, if you got this bike and it's pretty expensive, almost $2,000, you know, after you ship it and everything, you don't wanna scratch anything. So I'm definitely trying to be careful. Take that latch off. I'm gonna have to probably use my body weight to bend this thing. There we go. Definitely wanna be careful because you have those cables right there. And that's pretty much, I think, how it's gonna fold. Yeah, kinda, let's see. I just realized this doesn't have a stand on the bottom. Hold up. <laughs> Since this bike doesn't have a stand on the bottom, it's really gonna scratch the frame when you uh, set it down and fold it. So hold on, let me get something. Definitely don't want to scratch this bike on the bottom. So I, what I'm trying to say is I think at the very bottom of this bike, they should have put a little handle or something that the bike sits flat on. Uh, most of the electric bike companies have done that. This one doesn't seem to have done that. So let's not bang this up. Ooh. <laughs> so surprisingly, this does fold with a basket. The basket doesn't even come anywhere close to the bike. The actual handlebars sit like right in the middle. So not too bad at all. I feel out of breath after doing that. I feel like I'm sweating, especially with this garage clothes because everyone's out there walking around checking people's garbage and stuff. But uh, yeah, I was making sure I didn't scratch like nothing on this bike. I wanted to make sure that um, since it doesn't have anything like a platform to sit on the bottom, I wanted to make sure I didn't slam it against the ground and scratch up the frame and get chips all over it. Um, electric bike company does do great jobs on their paint job. I've actually had stuff hit my bikes before and I thought it scratched the heck out of it and it never did surprisingly, but I just, you know, you never know what's going to happen. But overall, it doesn't fold down as much as some other bikes I've had like Electra and um, the GA Sun bike that I had. But I will say this is a nice option to electric bike companies lineup that they have a foldable bike. It's definitely gonna help some of you that just can't fit a full bike in their car because you don't have a truck or you don't have a bike rack. So definitely you now have options if you do like this company and you want a foldable bike. Anyways, we gotta get on the road and ride it. We've been in the garage talking about it forever. I'm sweating in here. So let's get on the way and start riding it and go check it out. All right, we gotta do it. We gotta do it. Oh. Now you guys should be able to see the display. I like keeping these on, but it's so satisfying peeling these off. All right, let's get on the road. Oh yeah, okay, so right off the jump, when you sit on this bike, the bars definitely sit very close. Definitely feel like you're very close to the handlebars. They don't sit very far out, so my, my hands are very bent instead of normally I feel like on most bikes, my hands are like out there. This one's a lot different. Also, the throttle is pretty much almost instant. It might be a quarter of a second delay, but for the most part, it's very, very quick. And I'm in mode number five right now. We're pulling about 920 watts of power. And I wanna see what our top speed will be. So I'm gonna stay on the throttle for a while because we got our full battery right now. I like to always do the test on a full battery because that's the top speed that we're gonna get. Once the battery starts draining, you're not gonna get that top speed anymore. So let's go. We're about to hit 25 miles per hour. And keep in mind, I did see another reviewer do a video on this bike, and he actually showed that this is one mile per hour under what his GPS said. So it says we're doing 26 miles an hour, we're technically doing about 27 miles an hour, which I do think this bike would hit 28 miles per hour if we didn't have the accessories on here. So if we didn't have the basket on the front or the rear rack, I think we would definitely be getting uh, more top speed by probably an extra mile. 
All right, so this bike is absolutely comfortable. We're doing about 800 watts right now in mode number five, holding about 25, 26 miles per hour the whole time. I didn't adjust anything. I didn't put air in the tires. I didn't have to adjust the suspension. And I'm about 160, 165 pounds. And I'm about 5'9", five, 5'10". Five, and this bike is absolutely comfortable. The only complaint I really have about the bike is how close the handlebars are to me. Like I said, I think that's one downside to electric bike company on this model alone is that you can't move the bars forward or back. I feel like that was something they missed. All right, should we do a zero to 25? One, two, three, go. Twenty. 23, 24, 25, oh, 26, we're gonna hit 26. Yeah, there we go, 26. Not too bad, like, it's not the fastest bike I've ever been on, but I will tell you that I just recently rode a bike that said it was 1200 watts, 48 volt. This one's a 48 volt with a 750 watt motor, and I feel like the controller has more amps in this thing than the other bike did, so this thing actually picks up faster than that other bike did, which is crazy, right? So don't ever just go off of voltage on a bike when you want to buy one. This bike kicks ass for what it is. It's absolutely fantastic. And the nice thing about it is too, when you get off the bike, you have a little step through design. So it makes it easier for people that are shorter and everything to kind of get on the bike. Cause then you could just kind of put your feet over and then you just kind of slide onto the back of the seat. Now, one thing I was noticing when I was doing pedal assist that I didn't really talk about on the ride is the seat definitely has to go up like this high for my legs to actually fully pedal and feel comfortable. I feel like if they went down a little bit farther, it let my legs extend a little bit. But other than that, I'm probably not ever going to use the pedals. But if you're someone that used pedal assist, you're probably going to want to have the seat a lot higher than you would on a normal bike. Obviously, these bars are very short, shorter than most bikes I've been on. Most of the foldable bikes I've been on have been slightly longer. These are very, very short but the bike still feels stable and comfortable. Even with the heavy basket in the front, I don't have any issues. But since we don't have a seven speed on here, I'm very curious to see how it goes up this hill starting at the bottom. Now I'm gonna obviously be in mode number five, but let's just see how it does. All right, it got up it, but I mean, yeah, it was struggling. It's 750 watts coming up that with no speed, you know? So that's not bad though, not bad at all. I'm actually pretty impressed. Now, it's probably going to be worse if the battery was lower, but I mean, you can't complain about that. All right, so now we got to take it off-roading. Definitely got to see how the suspension is. We always take this road in these video reviews, and it's a short little road, but it's nice. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Look at us go, baby. Woo! That front suspension is very nice and comfortable. Now, not having the back suspension, the seat's doing a little bit of the job, but the one thing I'm noticing is that my, uh, my feet keep popping off of the pedals depending on the bump that I hit. If it's a very big bump, I can feel my feet ever so slightly kind of just, you know, lift up off of it. Oh my God, I thought he was gonna come and hit me. I didn't wanna run over a squirrel out here. I'm gonna put this in some of the top bikes that I've rode. For off-roading, even though it's not made to go off-road, I'm definitely gonna give this like a uh, like a seven and a half or eight out of 10, 100%. It's actually very, very nice. All right, now, next to brake test. Now, I know these brakes are gonna perform hella good. I hate to destroy these tires. But let's get like a good medium speed, like 25 miles per hour. So I was doing 27, it's pretty good. All right, so let's go off this pole right here. Oh wait, no, no, hold on. Let's go on this pole right here. 25 miles an hour, go. Woo! Man, these brakes work hella good. So we stopped at that no stopping anytime sign right there. And this thing was nice and smooth. I felt no like weird, um, like vibrations from the brake rotors, like they were uneven. I didn't feel any like skipping in the brakes and it barely locked up towards the end. I mean, that was probably one of the best brakes I've ever felt. And I think this bike would stop even better if we didn't have all the extra accessories on there. The lighter the bike is, the faster it's gonna stop. So uh, if you didn't have this basket, you're definitely gonna be stopping a lot better than that. That was fantastic. I give these brakes a 10 out of 10. Like, I can't complain about them whatsoever. 
another thing too to keep in mind because these bars are so short um, putting like accessories and stuff on your handlebars is going to be a little tricky um, you could put something right here like a phone mount but if you do put a phone mount right here it is going to either block the display depending on how your phone mount set up or it's going to uh, hide the throttle right here so it might get in the way um, you could maybe put something over here, but you're going to have to get rid of these zip ties for the wires, for the, the power and all that stuff, which probably should be easy, but I mean, that's just something extra you're going to have to do. There's really no room for anything on these bars, but you could, if you want, put a uh, front light on this bike right here on the stem, kind of wrap it around the front. That'd be kind of an idea. I'm enjoying this bike, guys. Absolutely enjoying it. So far on the whole entire bike since I've charged it, we're doing, we did five miles on it so far and I am down one battery bar. So I want to let you guys know, keep in mind that the settings that I told you to change is definitely going to ruin your 50 mile range that this bike is capable of. But I'm also not using the pedals at all. When they get that type of range, they're going off of one of the lower pedal assists and you actually pedaling the bike to assist it instead of just relying on motor power alone. So just keep that in mind when I say 50 miles of range. It's not going to get that, especially if you did the mods and all that kind of stuff. Do a little bit more off-roading and uh, test this bike out. Oh yeah. How is it this comfortable? Come on, give me a break. These guys definitely know what they're doing. Come on guys, I'm looking for something to complain about your bike with. You guys are making it very hard for me to do so. All right, so I wanna see if there's a delay in the pedal assist. So we've had it off this whole entire time on this bike ride. So let's turn on pedal assist. Now it's on. To get it on, you have to hold the down button, like I was saying earlier, and let's go. Oh, wow. That, oh, that was like almost instant. Oh yeah, that's nice. And as you're using the pedals, it says assist. When I let off, the assist goes away. So as I start going, okay, yeah, that's probably maybe a half second delay. Nothing crazy, that's about normal. It's almost instant, but it's not instant. I can't complain about that. Also, something I didn't mention earlier is that you do have a temperature reading on this bike too, which makes it very nice to know how hot it is on your ride. Um, it's saying it's 87 degrees out right now, which is, that's, fin that's fantastic that a display tells you that. I, I kind of like that. I wish my uh, Suron or my Super 73 told me how hot it was so I know how how bad I'm going to be sweating on the ride to work, you know, going home or something like that. That's a pretty cool feature. Should we try these brakes out one more time? Because I had a fun time trying those brakes. Uh, I'm going to go as fast as I can. It's probably only going to be like 24 miles an hour or so, but let's go off this little sign right here. We're going to slam it. So one, two, three, go. What? They don't even like... Look at that. Oh, I, okay. I guess it did skid. I didn't think it did, but it didn't feel like it was skidding at all. These tires are so like... You don't hear them at all, but look at that. I stopped right at the 45 mile per hour sign and wow, that's <laughs> fantastic. Good job, electric bike company. Wow. <laughs> I need these brakes on my Suron. Like, I feel like my Suron brakes aren't even this good. All right, so we're going up a slight hill. Nothing crazy. Probably doesn't even look like a hill at all, really. Um, we're gonna be coming up to the top of it right at this last arrow right here, but bike's not struggling at all. Still has very good power, about 900 watts. Now it's 850 watts. So under load, it's looking like 46.5 volts. I like that this company gives you a battery indicator just in case you don't understand volts too well. But it also gives you the volts for people like me that understand what I'm reading. And it's saying under load 46.3 volts. And if I let off, it goes up to about 47 volts. I love that feature on a bike because that kind of gives you a better indication on you know where you're going to run out of battery or how much battery you're pulling before you're at the very end of those cells under load and you might have to drop it down a power level or something like that just to make sure you don't hurt your battery or anything like that. So very nice. 
All right, so should we lock out the suspension? Because you have a lockout on this side. I'm very curious to lock it out and see how it is. So, okay. We're locked out. So the suspension is not going to move in the front. Let's see how big of a difference it is. Oh, ouch. <laughs> oh, my God. Holy crap. Oh, heck no. Oh, my God. Ooh, ooh, this is bad. I don't even know if you guys can tell how bad that is. But wow, that's a, that front suspension's working. All right, we have to switch that back on. Wow. Without front suspension, this bike would be pretty rough off-roading, even though it's not made to do it. It has street tires on it. But you know everyone's going to take their bike off-roading or certain areas and stuff like that, especially gravel and rocks and stuff like that on our main road. You really have to see how it performs. Ooh, all right, so back to where we started coming up this little hill right here. And I just want to let you guys know if you guys are really serious about buying this bike, which the F model foldable bike, or some of the other ones I reviewed, I've done the X and then I did another one, the E model rated for everybody. And my discount code works on all these bikes. It's code Mr. Central Driver. It's going to save you about 50 bucks on your bike. And if I'm not mistaken, I'll contact the company to verify this, but I think it comes with a free alarm system if you use my code also, which is a very nice touch just in case you leave your bike somewhere and you know you can hear someone messing around with it or something like that. But definitely go check them out. I mean, you don't have to go buy a bike from them if you don't want, but definitely check out their website. And for this one right now, you can't customize any of the colors or anything like that, but go to like one of their other bikes, like the Model R, the Model E, or the Model X, and you'll see all the customization parts that you can do. You can do the fender color, you can do the forks, you can do the frame, and they basically color this off to the side. Once it's done, then they assemble the bike together, and it, the quality is just fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Haven't had any issues with none of my bikes being messed up when they came in. Absolutely none. Like you can get that color right there if you want. That color is dope. I like that color. Go, because I know you ain't stopping anyway. Now I know what you guys are gonna think. You're probably gonna be like, what do I think about the bike? You guys are so into the video. It's probably been super long by now and you guys want to know my honest opinion and it's very hard to make an honest opinion when like you're a youtuber and these companies send you free products because obviously i get commission if you use my coupon my coupon code but i'm trying to sit here and tell you that electric bike company is outstanding i don't know what else to say not even this bike in general all their bikes on their website are just fantastic well, let's get back to the house and I'll give you my conclusion on the bike. After I've done almost 10 miles, 9.6 miles, we're down two battery bars out of four. All right, guys, so final conclusion of the electric bike Model F and it's, it's fantastic. I mean, I'm trying to think of a lot of wrong things to say about it and I, I do have some cons. Let's just get to them right now. It's not many though, it's definitely not a lot. But the fact that there is no bar at the very bottom of the bike, so when you do fold it, it is definitely going to hit the ground. So you definitely have to be careful to lay it on the ground so you don't scratch up the bottom of the frame and have the color come off, especially if you got this bike in a different color once the options are available on the website. Another con is these handlebars, they do go up and down. But the bad thing is, is there, there's no adjustability for them to go farther out or farther back. So they can't sit closer to you and you can't change really the seat too much the seat does slide a little bit back and forth but it doesn't make that big of a difference so if you're a big guy you have long hands like this you're definitely going to feel real cramped but other than that those are the only cons i can really think of i mean this bike has more power than it needs it feels very comfortable it's legal in pretty much all states obviously we modified it a little bit to go a little bit faster so just keep that in mind you do have to follow your rules and regulations on the road here in california i can go up to 28 miles an hour and be perfectly legal as a class 3 e-bike keep in mind though since we did change the speed of this bike doing the settings that we did earlier before we left we got the max speed and the max power out of this motor possible using throttle only i never pedaled i only pedaled for like maybe 10 seconds just to see how it was and that means that i was only going to get probably 20 miles of range out of this bike but Keep in mind, if you don't change none of these settings and you keep it at 20 miles per hour, you should be okay. You shouldn't have any problems getting probably almost close to 40 
uh, like 35, 40, if you probably just use a throttle only and it's limited to 20 miles per hour. But if you want to get the 50 miles of range it's capable of, you're going to want to go like pedal assist one or two, maybe three, and you're going to want to pedal the whole time to get that long range. But it's not a far out range. It's not a crazy number It's something. It seems like realistic and I'm very happy with it. The battery for this bike is perfectly sized for it. Would I like to see a 20 amp hour battery? Yes, but at the same time, it does make the bike a lot heavier. And to me, who really needs like 100 miles of range or something out of this bike? Um, the basket is a nice touch if you want to get it, but keep in mind that is an extra feature, so you will be paying extra for the basket. Right now, as I'm making this video, it is not available on their website. Same with the rear rack. You can buy these separately, but there's not an option to add it onto the bike. But if you want to give them a call and tell them like, hey, I like the Model F and I want the basket and the rear rack or just one or the other, tell them I sent you and use my discount code, Mr. Central Driver. Um, let them know about that and you can save some money and then you can get these put on there. And they should be able to install them for you for free and then ship the bike with it so you don't have to do any extra work. But anyways, for the most part, I appreciate you guys watching the video. And to me, I would give this bike a nine out of 10, 100%. Just for how it is, it's not a crazy fast bike, it's not a Suron, it's not a custom 72 volt e-bike, but it is a fantastic bike for the quality that you get. So see you guys in the next one. Hopefully you guys liked it and hopefully we'll do more videos on the electric bike company in the future. So I'll see you guys later.